The Lord bless you. I want to thank you for coming back for us to press with this second session of our exposition. We started in the morning and we were looking at Jesus himself who is the source of our identity and how do we tap him so that that identity can become our own identity we saw as many as received him that's where we ended as many as received him to them he gave the right to them he gave the power to become the son and the daughter of God. It is as we receive him that he shares with us his own personal space. So we became joint heirs with him. For this afternoon, since we are doing expository study, it will be important for us now to go on a little to look at the nitty gritty, the ingredients of that identity. And I will ask you to now let's go together to the Colossian passage we are reading. We have gone as far as verse 10 uh, in our exposition 1. So we would like to take a little step backward but we will move more deliberately by looking at verse 11 verse 12 verse 13 verse 14 15 and I will stop at that so tomorrow we will be trusting God to now deal with how not to sell out identity, how not to exchange it for anything, and how not to allow anyone to rubbish that identity. But today, this afternoon, we are looking at the ingredients, what makes that identity possible, and what are the nitty gritty of it. Thank you. I read now from verse 11. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the oppression of God who raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh as he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross verse 15 and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it that is in the cross may the Lord bless his word as we look at it more deeply this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, may I quickly say to you that each one of us born of a woman we came with an identity. But you cannot mix two identities together. 
if your natural identity has to change, something has to be done to it before you can be given another identity. A lot of people don't understand that we have an identity that was permanently inscribed in our lives. And unless something is done to it, unless it is abrogated, even if anybody tries to bring you another identity, it will not catch. We saw that Jesus was not arbitrary in wanting to change our identity and give us a new identity. There was something he had to do. Let me first uh, explore what was our former identity? What was it? I need to explore it because as soon as you begin to read verse 11, it raises the question of our former natural identity. And if one is not taken out, the new cannot come. If one is not removed, the new identity cannot be so imposed. You'll be a man who is struggling with an identity you used to have that everybody knew you with and you grew with and you are trying to pick another. How possible? So, 1 Corinthians 15 will introduce that identity before we go on quickly. Can you turn to 1 Corinthians and chapter 15 quickly before I begin to introduce how did Jesus what are the nitty gritty? What did he do in order to change and give us an identity that is glorious that we can walk with? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I want you to look at verse 48. Maybe I should read 47, 48. Maybe you will, you will rather enjoy it if I read from verse 45. And then I get as far as verse 49. And so it is written. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. So it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not first, which is spiritual? For that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image. And if you want to change the word image, you will have said, as we have borne the identity of the earthly, we shall also bear the image, the identity of the heaven. Now, that scripture gives us a very quick summary of things. And I have to deal with that because the nitty gritty of a new identity that God is bringing to us is that one identity was there before and it needed to be discarded. Now the Bible said the first man, Adam, he was made a living soul. For the last Adam, the Lord Jesus, was made a quick.
quickening spirit. So you can see two parallel identity now. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual. And this is where the first matter is. We did not have the spiritual identity first. Albeit, it is not the spiritual that came first. Which one came first? The natural. And this is why Jesus had to engage the cross to change that which was there first. All of us sitting here, the first identity, the first image, the first outlook that we have is the natural. And because it is the natural that came first. Permit me to say to you, your first identity, your first image, your first lifestyle, your first response in life is natural. That is why every time Unless God has brought that change that we have been talking about, the natural always wants to come first. I will describe this natural very quickly so that we can move on because we need to move on very fast uh, in this matter this afternoon. Say, as the first man is of the earth, Eti. So that first identity is earthy, is earthly. Everything about it is downward looking. Everything about it is under the force, the force of gravity. Everything about the natural is under the power of the evil one. And that natural identity, the character of it, we are going to see it very soon. But let me quickly say that it is earthy. But the good news, which is in verse 49 for me, it says, As we have borne the image of the earthy, as we have carried the identity of the natural, as we have walked and lived under the identity, under the image, under the lifestyle of the natural, so by the grace of God, we shall also, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. But the transition between that which is natural, that which is earthly, and that which is heavenly, and that which is spiritual, is what Colossians chapter 2, in a very, very concise summary, was bringing to us. Now, let us quickly return to Colossians and chapter 2 where we are reading now in Colossians chapter 2 he spoke in verse 11 and introduced a concept oh I wish we have all our time to begin to deal with this little by little so that you can have an understanding of what God has done in our lives but wherever we are, whatever we're able to get tonight, we trust God to give it an increase. Look at verse 11 very closely. He said, In whom also you are circumcised 
with the circumcision made without hands. And what is this circumcision supposed to do? In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Please wait in verse 11 and let us quickly explore what was that verse talking about very quickly. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands but in a spiritual circumcision performed by Christ by sprinkling off the body of the flesh the whole corrupt carnal nature with its passions and lust. Wow. In that little Bible verse, something serious has taken place. Now, let us, because we are doing Bible session, it's also important to have a Bible knowledge so that when you are beginning to deal with your own identity, you will have a proper base to be able to assert it. And you have a proper understanding of how it came about. Now, the concept of circumcision was introduced in the book of Genesis chapter 17. That was when the concept and the covenant of circumcision was introduced. Because I don't have time, I will only mention it as I go ahead. Now, all of you, if you go to Genesis, let me ask you all to run to Genesis. You will read chapter 16, and then you come to chapter 17, and then I will introduce that concept and I will trace wherever this concept was introduced so that we can come to how it finds fulfillment in Christ Jesus. The truth of the matter is that if you have not experienced circumcision, there can be no imposition of a new identity. And I'm praying that before we will end Joshua Generation Conference this year, the Lord will circumcise you. I didn't hear you saying amen. And when I finish explaining, you will see that that will be something major that God will do for us. In Genesis chapter 16, something terrible happened to the man of God, Abraham. Abraham had been a man that God had great plan for. In fact, God called him and said, out of him, all the families of the whole heart shall be blessed. God went all the way to pick him up. And God was making Abraham a friend of his. And Abraham was coming up. He left his father, he left his mother, and he was going to that promise that God made unto him. But there was a matter that he struggled with in his life. The trouble of barrenness. His wife was barren. But God was making a promise that I'm going to give you a son and through you through your seed, the whole earth shall be blessed. And I tell you, Abraham was a great man. Abraham walked with God. Abraham had great experiences with God. Abraham built altars. Abraham had the great promises of God on his life. God gave him 
such a covenant promise that up to today we are walking in. In chapter 15 of that Genesis, God came to Abraham in a vision. This is after, this was when he had gone to fight against Sodom and Gomorrah and he had come back victorious and he has brought a lot out of that captivity and everything. But in chapter 15, God appeared to him. And after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. Chapter 15, verse 1. In a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceeding great word. But God was saying to Abraham, I am your shield, I am your reward. Me, myself, I become your reward. You will possess me. You will inherit me. I will be your reward. When they say, what did you get? They say, I got God. That was something. I have been given to giver of all things. And if God, who is the giver, the owner of all things, becomes your reward, you can see that there's nothing again in the whole world that will not belong to you. But because Abraham had this desire, passion for a child, he said to God, and you say, you are the Lord, you are my reward, you are my days, and I'm going childless. This Eliezer of Damascus who will inherit my house. God said, No, 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 don't talk like that. And God entered into a relationship with him again. And the Bible said, He believed in the Lord and it was counted to him for righteousness. But by the time chapter 15 ended, with all the promises that God gave him and all the assurances that God laid on his life. By the time he came to chapter 16, I want you all to turn. Something happened. Something happened. Sarah, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. And she had an unmade, an Egyptian, whose name was Aga. Again, I don't have time to talk to you how Aga came to his life. There are certain things you pick when you go down to Egypt that if you don't uproot it it will uproot you from the kingdom of God certain little little habits when you just went down let me just and before you know it that you become an addiction so there was agar the problem of agar no time to talk about it up till now we're still struggling with agar even today, as I was driving through, I saw the descendants of Ishmael who came from Agar. And it's like that all over the world. If the church has struggled with anything, our greatest struggle are with the songs that Agar produced. They claim, they said, Abraham also is their father. But we know what happened. Now, so in verse 15, chapter 16, verse 15, and Agab bear Abraham a son. And Abraham called his name, his son's name, which Agab bear, Ishmael. And Abraham was 86 years old when Agab bear Ishmael to Abraham. Are you all following me? Eh? Now, those of you that are a Bible student and you can read your Bible. I want you to check. Is there any Bible verse between Genesis chapter 16 verse 16 and Genesis chapter 17 verse 1? Check quickly. Is there any verse that is in between verse 16 of chapter 16 and verse 17 and chapter 17 verse 1? Eh? I didn't hear you. There is no Bible verse. But I want you to check. In between chapter 16 verse 16 and chapter 17 verse 1, how many years 
how many silent, unaccounted years can you quickly find out there? Please check. Check, 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 check. Quickly. Who has got an answer for us? We are just doing small arithmetic. Eh? 13 years. How did you know? By chapter 16, verse 16, it was 86. Chapter 17, verse 1, which is supposed to be the next verse, was, it was 99. So which means, in between verse 16 and verse 1 of chapter 17, there are how many years? 13 years. 13 years of what? 13 years that has no record. 13 years that scattered the life of a great man of God. 13 solid years that Abraham himself could not account for what was happening to him. In those 13 years, when you have time, you will see that he had become, he had married two wives. And the small girl, who used to be a house girl, you don't know, you don't need to understand that when the big man of God now married the house girl, the girl that used to serve madam now became the madam. How does he go? Eh? You know the trouble. And Aga was not a simple girl at all. She started arrogating herself against Sarah. The sweet family devotions scattered. The prayer life of Abraham scattered because usually you will read, say, and Abraham built an altar to the Lord. And Abraham built an altar to the Lord. And Abraham built an altar to the Lord. But for 13 years, no altar. For 13 years, fight. In these 13 years, there was serious quarrel in the family. In these 13 years, how did I know? Since there was no record, how did I know? There's an indication when you come to verse 1 of chapter 17. Let's all quickly look at it. We are doing Bible exposition, that's why we are doing this. And I'm introducing that which Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 was talking about. Because it has to be dealt with now. The Bible said. And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the Lord, the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Hi. Here was a man that left all to follow the Lord. There was a man that God was appearing to several. And by the year when he was, say, about 85, God had appeared to him and said, I am your exceeding great reward. But now, now, God was now appearing and reintroducing himself I am the Almighty. Something has finished the relationship he used to have with God. Something has scattered his life. And he has forgotten where he was coming from. And forgot to come back to him. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. I was asking, where was he walking before? Where was he walking for 30 years? He was walking in darkness. He was walking in confusion. 
And God came back and said, Abraham, I'm the almighty God. Who, I'm that God that started working with you many years ago and you have left. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and you. And I will multiply you exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face. And God talked with him saying, as for me. All of you are using verse 4. As for me. I don't know for you, but for me. Behold, my covenant is with you. I don't change. You have moved up and down. But for me. As for me, oh, look at God putting his hand in his chest. Say, as for me, Abraham, my covenant is with you, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name anymore be called Abraham. God was changing his identity. But your name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made you. And I will make you exceeding fruitful And I will make nations of you And kings shall come out of you And I will establish my covenant Between me and you And your seed After you in their generations For an everlasting covenant To be a God unto you And to your seed after you I will give unto you And to your seed after you The land where I run Thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and it will be their God and God said to Abraham thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and your seed after you in their generations this is my covenant which you will keep between me and you and your seed after you every man child among you shall be what shall be circumcised now that's the beginning of it. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight day old shall be circumcised among you. Every man, child in your generations, he that is born in your house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of your seed. In verse 15. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but she shall be called Sarah, shall be her name, change of identity. I will bless her and give her a son. I will give thee a son also of her. And yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations, kings, of people shall be of her. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years of old? Eh? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Something has happened to this man of God. God is speaking something serious. Did you hear what he's saying to himself? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he now opens his mouth. Abraham said to God, Sir, forget about that thing you are talking about. Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. At least I've got Ishmael. Just bless my mistake. And let's go on. I wish he did not do that. I wish he had allowed God to, to deal with this matter completely. Maybe we would not have been where we are in our generation and in the world today. But that's not my concern this afternoon. My concern is that covenant of circumcision. So God said to him, God said in verse 20, As for Ishmael, I've had you. Behold, I've blessed him 
and I will make him fruitful and I will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. But I have no covenant with him. My covenant will I establish with Isaac which Sarah shall be unto you. So at the end of that matter Abraham and the whole of his house got circumcised. At what age was Abraham circumcised? Can you remember? At what age? At 99. That brought a matter to my heart this moment. That no matter how old you are, if you are going to have a change of identity, you have to be circumcised. But in this, it looks so ordinary. But when you go a little further in the word of God, you hear God beginning to talk about circumcision. That this circumcision is first and foremost the circumcision of the heart. And as you go further in the word of God, let me ask you just to take one of it. I would have loved to go on reading, but our space will not allow that. Can you go to Jeremiah and pick just one as we go away from that point and go to the New Testament now? In Jeremiah chapter 4, Jeremiah 4, are you then Jeremiah 4? And I'd like to read Jeremiah 4, verse 4, very quickly. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the false kings of your heart. You men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, let my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the false king of your heart. So we now come into that great passage that has been our text. Colossians chapter 2. All of you please run with me now back to our text. Colossians chapter 2. Now, that verse 11 now begins to say, In him also you were circumcised. You were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands. Which means, even when God was talking to Abraham, and was introducing the concept of circumcision, there was something God wanted to deal with. It is something in his heart that God wants to cut off. God needed to change Abraham from Abraham to Abraham. And what will make that identity to become permanent is the cutting off. The cutting off of the first king of his heart. But physically speaking, they had to do it when he was 99 years. Without anesthesia. It was some years ago that I now understood what it meant when I traveled somewhere to South Africa to preach. And they asked me to come and preach in a circumcision ceremony was wondering what does that mean is a baby going to be circumcised as a priest no they said there's this boy that has grown at least you must be 18 19 and above before you are circumcised and he's going to go to a circumcision school it was a whole matter i've never seen something like that but as a preacher i've seen all kinds of things so when they say I should come and preach at that circumcision, I stood and said, Lord, 
this kind of circumcision, where is the Bible for it? Amen. Then the word of God came. So you need to see what happened that day. We forgot the boy that was being circumcised. And everybody was coming out to be circumcised with a circumcision that is not of the ordinary life. Now, brothers and sisters, for your identity to change, the identity you were born with has to be cut off. For you to bear a newness of life, the old nature, as we read now, can you now read the Amplified Version of verse 11, Colossians 2, verse 11 for us from the Amplified Version. I thought it would be very uh, explicit if you read it like that quickly, verse 11 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Circumcision that was not made with hands. That's a circumcision that you must go through, but it's not the one made with human hands. Yes? Uh -huh. By stripping off the body of the flesh. And what is the body of the flesh? The whole corrupt. The whole corrupt carnal nature carnal nature with its passions with its and passions lust. and lusts this was the nature that we are born with this was the nature that you were born with that nature is our primary identity and that identity follows you from from, from birth to the grave unless another circumcision takes place. And this is what Jesus decided to do in order to give us a new identity. Now, let's study it a little. I know I'm running for time, but we cannot we cannot bypass this matter that has become critical this evening. Now, look at that scripture again, all of you. In whom also you are circumcised. But this circumcision is a circumcision without, made without hands. And what is the essence of that circumcision? It is in putting off. It is in stripping off the body of the flesh. But King James Version quickly said, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So that has introduced another word. The flesh. The flesh. And we must quickly, quickly, because these are very, very critical words that is coming out to us in this study. Because if you are going to go away with a correct identity, this former identity has to be circumcised. So let's look at what the Bible is calling the body of the sins of the flesh. Or what uh, the Amplified had made and said the stripping off the body of the flesh, the whole corrupt carnal nature with its passions and loss. Would you like, in a very short moment, read Galatians 5? All of you follow me to Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5, very quickly. If you follow me quickly to Galatians 5, you will see what... Colossians 2 verse 11 was now talking about. All of you, are you in Galatians chapter 5? Are you there? I want to hear if you are there. You say, yes, sir. Aha, uh -huh, thank you. Now, go to verse 17. 
verse 17. Perhaps let me read verse 16, 17, 18, and then we will settle together to read verse 19 and verse 20 and verse 21 together before we move. Now he said, This I say then. Walk in the spirit, and you shall not do what? Fulfill the lust, the agitation, the desire, the passion of the flesh. Why? Say for the flesh. All of you are you following me? The flesh lost it against the spirit. Is anybody by any means having good news Bible here today? Can you read good news verse 17 for me? Are you having good news, brother? No good news today? Eh? What our human nature is opposed, what our human nature wants is opposed, is opposed to what yes all right thank you maybe i could get that version from here so that i can be your help to myself now since i'm not seeing the people that have good news here who can read uh, into the microphone for me eh or oh, is on the screen thank you very much uh, but I'm not seeing the screen. That's why I could not read it. No screen for me here. I will be following my own self here. God will help me. Now, for what our human nature wants is opposed. Oh, you have come with good news. That's good. Find a seat and sit near the pro. Right, thank you what our human nature wants is opposed to what the spirit wants these two what are they they are friends they are colleagues they are partners what the bible say they are enemies they are enemies and this means that you cannot do what you want to do. So the flesh is contrary, is at loggerhead, always, not once a time, not once a week. Every time the flesh is contrary to the spirit. Now, this is where the problem is. So this is why you cannot do what you want to do. Many of you, you want to be spiritual. Am I right? But there's something say no. I came here first. Someone will say, I don't want to misbehave again. After this, I will not misbehave again. Mr. Fred said, no, you. You. You will misbehave, oh. Because until I am cut off, I am in charge. We have talked. There are certain things you say, no, 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 Lord, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. But as long as Mr. Flesh has not been circumcised out, a new identity cannot take place. So now that you are here, can you now stand up or read on? Can you read verse 19 for us? What human nature does is quite plain. And what human nature does is quite plain. Now, before you go, those of you that are reading in the King James, you know that the King James says, Now, the works of the flesh are what? Are manifest. They are clear. They are clear. You can't confuse them. You know it. You know it. Yes. It shows itself. Mr. Flesh, wherever he's around, he shows itself in immoral, filthy, 
filthy and indecent actions. Wait, if Prof can read that for us from uh, from his own version, can you try and read that verse 19 for us very quickly? Now the doings, practices of the flesh are clear. Look at the way that is put in. He said the doings and the practices of Mr. Flesh are quite plain and clear. Yes? Obvious. They are obvious. They are immorality. Immorality. Impurity. Impurity. Indecency. Indecency. Idolatry. Idolatry. Sorcery. Sorcery. Enmity. Enmity. Strife. Strife. Jealousy. Jealousy. Anger. Anger. Ill temper. Heal temper, selfishness, selfishness, divisions, divisions, that's dissensions, dissensions, party spirit, party spirit, that's factions, factions, sects with peculiar sex, opinions, sex with peculiar opinions, heresies, heresies, envy, envy, drunkenness, drunkenness, carousing, carousing, and the like. And this, that's to show that the list that Proverbs read. Is what? It's just a list. It's not comprehensive. It's not exhaustive. That's what Mr. Flesh does. That's the first identity that we all collected. Sister, read. Just read for us because I'm going away from there. They are envious. They are envious. Get, get drunk. Why don't you why don't you go back? To that verse 19. What human nature does is quite plain. What human nature does is quite plain. It listen, is. listen before you go. Let nobody sit there and say, Me, I don't know whether I have that uh, human nature or not. We will show you what he does. What he does is quite plain. And whenever he is acting, you will know. If he is no more here, you will know. If he is still around, you will know. And we need to know what was Jesus going to do about it. Yes? It shows itself in immoral. It shows itself. So when you see immoral, indecent action, who is showing itself? Talk to me, please. It's the flesh. It's the flesh. Listen, whether this is manifested in the hotel or is manifested in the church vestry, whether it's appearing among choir or it is the minister, the, the man of God that is manifesting it to young ladies. Who is manifesting himself? Is the flesh. So whether flesh is in the pastor or the flesh is in the church worker or the flesh is in the market, his work is obvious. <laughs> filthy and indecent actions. You know all of that. Pornographic and all the sort. Indecent actions. Yes? In worship of idols and witchcraft. It manifests itself in the worship of idols and witchcraft. Yes? People become enemies and they fight. People become enemies. Whenever you see people fighting, who is manifesting itself, please? They may be fighting maybe over church members or they may be fighting over market or they may be fighting in the classroom or they may be fighting over boyfriend or girlfriend whatever they are fighting over who is manifesting in self place is mr flesh whatever be the cause of fight whether they are fighting over money or they are whatever they are fighting over and you know the fight am i correct you know the fight Hey, sister, you know the fight. You know the fight between you and Rachel. You know the fight. And Chooks was the fight. Eh? That young man Chooks was the fight. Eh? We were about to sing. Chooks looked at Cecilia and said, Rachel, you are the one to back me up. And then Cecilia said, eh? Is the only Rachel that is backing somebody up? Eh? If it's like that, I will not roll. I will not roll me i will not roll what is the quarrel chooks 
You know it. Wherever there is quarrel, whatever they are fighting over, whether they are fighting over money or whatever, who is at work? Mr. Flesh. Yes. They become jealous. They become jealous. Angry and ambitious. They become angry and ambitious. So when you see anger, some say, me, I'm not always angry. But I can be quiet. But if you pull my, my nose, I will show you. I'll show you my true color. I don't talk, but I can bite. Yes. And I'm not joking with you. Uh -huh. Who is at work there? That is that man. Whenever you see it, it means he is still around. Yes, sir. They separate into parties and groups. They break into parties and groups. That our brother, when he read in Amplified Bible, he said they create sect, fashion, party spirit, all kind of things. Yes. They are envious. They are envious. They get drunk. They get drunk. They have orgies. They have orgies. And do other things like this. And they do other things like this. I wish you have your time to be reading. You can read that Bible verse. There's no time for me. Now, when Jesus wanted to give us a new identity, the scripture now says, in that Colossians 2, it says, In him you were circumcised with the circumcision not made with hands. The circumcision that put away the body of the flesh, the whole corrupt carnal nature that is contrary, always at loggerhead against God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This afternoon, because of our time, and because of the issues that the Holy Spirit wants to raise, I will beg you very quickly, very quickly, to place your finger on a matter. Because we are dealing with my identity. And if you cannot bear two identities at the same time, we need to check. And you need to be sincere with God and with me. Whose image am I still carrying? Whose identity is always prognosing again and again and again and again? Even though some of you have become even a preacher. But just imagine that PCC parochial council meeting you attended. And as somebody says something, it just created a, a stomach ache for you. Your stomach just turned. Then you just stood up. Say, excuse me. As a vicar in charge of this place, I can't hear this kind of nonsense that you are talking about. The meeting is hereby closed. And then the man of God carried his Bible and walked away. Excuse me. Who is at work there? And before you know it, the parish perish in your hand. When this thing is not uprooted, any other identity that anybody is putting on you will not work. Oh, it will scatter it. If you want to go far with God, circumcision has to take place. But I want to thank God that there's a circumcision not made with hands. There's a circumcision 
Now, the book of Colossians call it circumcision. But Galatians use another word. Now, will you like to read Galatians 5, 20, 24 for us? 24, sir. Quickly. 24. And those who belong to Christ. Those who belong to Christ. Christ Jesus the Messiah. Yes. Have crucified the flesh. They have crucified the flesh. Whereas Colossians use the word have been circumcised. Now Gal Galatians use the word crucified. So the word crucified. Are you hearing me? It is the means of circumcising and cutting off Mr. Flesh. Now read on, read on, sir. Quickly. I have crucified the flesh, the godless human nature. And crucified the flesh, the godless human nature. With its passions. With its passions. And appetites. Appetites. And desires. Desires. Those who belong to Christ, this must have happened to them. If this has not happened, we are going nowhere. Sister, can you get it for me from the good news? Verse 24. And those who belong to Christ Jesus. Those who belong to Christ Jesus. Have put to death their they nature, have put to death their human nature. With all its passions and desires. With all its passions and desires. I pray that even this afternoon, the Spirit of God we take this message deeper than we can discuss it. Once we said my identity, a critical issue has been raised. And the critical issue is what Jesus wants to do. Every man that comes to him and he wants to walk in them and he wants to give them a new identity. He must do something. Your old man. Your human nature. That Mr. Flesh. With his passion. With his desire. Must come. Under the cross. Circumcision without hands. Must take place. So as I return now. Please return with me. To that Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And we are still only struggling with verse 11. Uh, it was important so that all the other verses behind can now take their shape. Right. Let's ask the sister to read good news first before we read Amplified and before. I conclude with King James. Yes. In union with Christ. In union with Christ. Yes. Not with the circumcision that is made by human beings. Start again. In union with Christ, you in, were circumcised. You were circumcised. Not with the circumcision that is made by human this beings. This thing we are talking about cannot be made by human beings. No human being can cut off Mr. Flesh from you. No human activity can do it. It cannot be done by human hands. It has to be done supernaturally by the Lord Jesus. It is a miracle that must take place only when Jesus steps in to work. But do you know what is my business this evening? When the children of Israel were to cross to the land, to the land of promise, because they were not circumcised while they were in the wilderness, God called Joshua. Joshua, make you sharp knives and circumcise the children of Israel again, for they were not circumcised before. Again, circumcision was going to take place for adults. What did they have to do? They lined up before Joshua. They undress themselves. Are you hearing me? They undress themselves 
and this man brought sharp knife. You need sharp knife. You don't need Vaseline to circumcise Mr. Flesh. You don't need anybody to pamper you and be rubbing your hair and say, brother, you are all right, you are all right. You are not all right. Sister, you are not all right. The thing that is troubling you inside is the thing that will not let you make progress. See how many times say, me, I'm not go, I'm not go quarrel again, I'm not go quarrel again. You try to keep quiet for one week. Something happened. Something spoke inside. Say, if you keep quiet now, these are the people we use you to, to, to sweep the floor. You just make your life like 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 rubber carpet. So before you know it, something you be like this. So is it because I'm keeping quiet? That's why you people are rubbishing me. I will tell you that I'm not a man to be rubbish. Yes. I thought I would not talk, but I will talk. Mr. Flesh, no matter how you how you press it down, it will wake up. So the miracle that must take place. For you to freely go with an identity that is glorious circumcision but this is what Jesus Christ went to the cross to make possible it's only that even though he had made that provision it cannot become active for you until you present yourself and say Lord just as I am let me undress myself let me open up. Because where I am, I know I am not correct. I know I'm struggling. I know there are troubles in my life that does not have direction. I need your help now. I need your touch now. You know, when you came out before, those that came, there are some say, where well, me? I receive Christ, so I receive Christ. I don't have problem thank you but what of that man in fact when you are about to step out that man spoke inside say eh, he hold you prof you want to go out before your student hmm. mm -mm. Mm -mm. don't do what don't disgrace who aha Self, say you can't disgrace me here. I will do my prayer at home. For where? Mr. Fred saying, Don't carry me out. Don't let people be looking at me as if I've not been serious. Mr. Flesh. Mr. Flesh will not let you get to anywhere, even though God. Is longing to help you. Sister, you need to read it for me now. Yes. In union with Christ. In union with Christ, yes. you were circumcised. Uh -huh. Not with the circumcision that is made by human beings. Not with the circumcision that is made by human beings. But with the circumcision made by Christ. It is only the circumcision made by Christ that can set a man free from Mr. Flesh that former identity yes which consists of being freed from the power of the uh, 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 and you miss that small word which consists of being freed 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 uh -huh. being freed you know the meaning of being free uh, to be set free Abi, uh, read it again which consists of being freed being from, freed from the power of this simple self from the power of this simple self brothers do you know that Mr. Self has power? How many of you know that? Power to compare. He compares you to do what you don't want to do. Sometimes you told yourself, I will not watch that film again. But Mr. Flesh said, when it is time, you just say, just for one minute. One minute will become one hour. When you want to switch, you say, ah, can 
you switch off. I'm not satisfied. It's nothing inside. You are compared under the power of the sinful self. But it is this circumcision that Christ had made available for us in union with Christ. You were circumcised not with circumcision that is made by human beings but with the circumcision made by Christ which consists of being freed from the power of this sinful self. Prof, read now. Read verse 11. I'll let you read down until you can get to verse verse 13 because I want to reach verse 14 before I stop this evening. Go ahead. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, but in a spiritual circumcision performed by Christ. Christ is the one that does it. By stripping off the body of the flesh, uh -huh. the whole corrupt carnal nature with its passions and loss. And loss. Thus you were circumcised when you were buried with him in your baptism, uh -huh. in which you were also raised with him to a new life through your faith in the working of God as displayed when he raised him up from the dead. And verse 13. And you were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, your sensuality, your sinful carnal nature. God brought to life together with Christ having freely forgiven us all our transgressions. May God grant you understanding. My dear brother, dear sister, if not by Christ, no human hand can set you free from the power of the sinful self. And until you get baptized into Jesus, and I want to say now, this is not about water baptism. Water baptism, if I have time, I would have been explaining that it's a symbol of a reality. It's a burial ceremony. But let me tell you, do we conduct burial ceremony for a man who has not died? Somebody has not died. He said, let's go and conduct his burial service. Does it make sense? When do we do burial service? Eh? When a man has died and confirmed dead. You. You. When did Mr. Flesh, when did he die? What are you doing with that paper certificate that you are carrying up and down? When Mr. Flesh is still saying, I'm in charge here. I'm in charge. This circumcision, not made with hands, happens when you become swallowed into Christ. When you become submerged into Christ, into his death. So Romans will have given us a better or a more easy explanation by saying, those of you, don't you know that? Those of us that were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death. A circumcision that will take place by the grace of God in this meeting. We become activated when I will see someone saying, now Lord, I have tried. I have used human effort. I've engaged human hands to see whether I can cut off this thing. And it will never be done. But I'm hearing that in union with Jesus, by being baptized into his death, this matter can be cut off and cut off cleanly and I'll be freed from the power of the sinful self. And this afternoon, Lord, Knowing that this matter is with me. Knowing that I can be smiling, but the man is not smiling inside. 
you know that Mr. Flesh is a great it's a great dramatist he knows how to hide and present a face there are things that he does and he does it neatly and yet he pretends as if it is not going on if I have time I would have been asking you to suggest what he does but there is no time you know it but now the word of God says and you who were dead in trespasses in the uncircumcision of your flesh your sensuality your sinful carnal nature God is bringing life together with Christ having freely so I stop here you know I say I'm getting to verse 14 but I cannot get to verse 14 now because of our time I will need to stop here and do the one thing that is very important verse 14 verse 15 16 by God's grace up to 23 I will spend the rest of my time tomorrow to deal with as the Lord will permit do you agree for me to do that so that we can pray together now so that we can conclude one matter verse 14 is only a follow come it's only as a result of what happened at the circumcision so if you permit us to pray together listen the kind of prayer we are going to pray this afternoon whereas here in the in the morning we had good time to ask people to come out but this afternoon this afternoon I don't have to beg you to come out you know the matter you know how much you thought you would be free by your self-determination were you free were you free talk to me were you free no sometimes you fasted say I will fast and you fasted for three days just to overcome that thing as soon as you are fasting and you broke your fast who came Mr. Flesh and right say well done but I'm here again in fact the first indication is that when when the food was not ready eh, at the time you were to break your fast hey my god how that man said look at you he's talking to his wife look at you i've been waiting on the mountain for the past three days now that it's time for me to break food is not ready what were you doing what are you here for all together kai if not because i'm just coming from the mountain i will deal with you but thank god thank god that old man fasting cannot deal with it that old man nothing else can deal with it except this circumcision made without him. and the way we want to call on God now all those who know and this is not a time to pretend you know it you know that if we live here and that matter is not dead with it cut off it will cut you down again it will make you up and down up and down in and out hot and cold almost at the same time but this evening this evening jesus has provided a circumcision made without hands but it requires that somebody is going to step out and say no I'm tired I'm tired of struggling I'm tired of hiding I'm tired of pretending I just need your touch I need that circumcision 
which human being cannot do for me I need you Lord the song you will raise for me I need you every hour most gracious Lord now why we are singing this song because this is you crying to God for yourself because this is your heart say oh God I don't know where to go again I don't know who else can help me but I heard that there's this circumcision let it happen now such persons without me calling you in or out you will stand before God you will lift up your two hands and when it is possible for you I don't know whether it will be possible for you to run out but whatever is possible do it now and say Lord Lord you came to touch a matter that had been touching my life in a very difficult manner you are talking about an issue that I don't know how to come out from but there is a circumcision made with our hands as we stand to pray and as we begin to seek God, all those who are tired of managing Mr. Flesh, get on your feet. If you can run, run down. But let it be you and God. Say, God, this meeting must end this matter. All those who are tired of struggling, all those who are saying, I don't know where to manage again. I can see the flesh will not let me be anything. Anytime you want to take a step, it will block you. It has made your marriage difficult. I wish you will bring it before the Lord now. I wish you will bring it and let's soak it into Christ. Let's put it in his hand. Let the hand of God that circumcises it without hand, let it do it. Is there someone else? Are there people that are saying, oh, and I hear someone say, I went out before, but the thing will not stop. I don't want to go again. Bring it to the Lord. Bring it before the cross. Let this meeting end it. A new identity is only possible when that identity is cut off. Friend, I think you are coming. Move fast. Young sister, please come fast sometimes you are an official of our meeting but the matter is still dealing with you allow god to handle it are you coming quickly before we pray my brother are you coming down just come down quickly that sister thank you brother thank you just run quickly god lord send us help this day do something for us this day are you coming? Please run. Run quickly. Thank you, my dear sisters. Touch my life, Lord. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Lord. Go ahead. Let it give us that song. Let's go on. Go on. Yeah, friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Touch my life, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Touch my life. Are you coming from that end? Please run. God bless you. God bless you. Run. Just run down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My brother, just run down. Come down. I know God is the one telling you that this has to be dead with. This has to be dead with. If it is not dead with, we are in trouble. Touch my life, oh Lord. Can you all join us? Touch my life. Touch my life. Touch my life. Touch my life. I see some people needing to come down. Please do that quickly. I want to call on God for you now. Touch my life. Touch my life. Oh Lord, touch my life. Touch my life, touch my life, oh Lord, touch my life, touch my life, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's okay now. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Are you coming this way? Please move fast. This is not something to be ashamed away. Mr. Flesh will tell you, don't tell anybody. Don't confess it. But it's only to keep you down. But as God is calling you this afternoon, just move down quickly. Thank you, my friend. Are you coming? Just do that quickly. God bless you. Ah, those two ladies, can you move faster? Can you run? And say, today is my day. God bless you. God bless you. I don't know why Jesus coming this way today is dealing with the ingredients. If we don't deal with it, something will go wrong. We can do meetings for 10 years. If Mr. Flesh is not cut off, it will spoil it. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Step forth your two hands to God and just tell him. I will ask you to sing a song. It's a very important song. No delay, labors of my heart can fulfill the Lord's demand. Could my tears no respite, no. Could my tears no respite, no. All for sin could not at all. Thou must say, Thou must say, Thou must say, and Thou alone. We do that song again. Nothing in my heart I break. Simply, simply to the cross. They can, they can come today for bread. Helpless, I am helpless. I am helpless. Ah, fall I do to the fountain flow. Wash me, Lord. Wash me, Savior. We do that two song again. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill the Lord's demand. Come, my dear, no rest, my dear. Come, my dear, forever flow. Ah, oh, for sin, could not at all. Thou must save, thou must save, and thou alone. Now I want you to leave those two empty hands to God. Now, empty hands. Nothing in my hands I bring. Oh, simply to, to the cross I cling. Make a call today for dress. Helpless love today for grace. Ah, to the fountain flow. Oh, yeah. Watch me, Savior. Rock of it is clear for me. Let me hide myself in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the, Let the waters and the blood from the river side, from side with flow, be your sin, the double kill. Cleanse me from his skill and power. With those two hands lifted to heaven, again I will hand over to our fathers in God. I believe that this meeting must mark a turning point. Your identity from this meeting has to be completely changed. That old man, that old carnal nature, 
that continue to pull you down secretly there's a circumcision this evening it's not with human hands it's not with human wisdom there's a circumcision by Christ himself a cutting off is taking place this night something will be cut off from your life from this evening that man will be cut out with his passions and desires and God who does what a man cannot do you will see Jesus this moment you will see the man of Calvary the cross is going to work on your behalf thank you father those two hands still lifted just lift those two hands wherever you are there are even maybe some persons in the congregation there and he said look I'm tired I'm tired nothing in my hands I bring simply to the cross I cling naked come nothing to hide if you don't trust me I'm in, I'm in trouble helpless look to you for grace Oh, all I do to the Brothers and sisters, we thank God for the word of God that has come to us for this response. The God who called out light out of darkness is about to do a new thing. It is not by power nor by might you may have tried and felt, but God will never fail you. When we lean on him, our weaknesses are turned into strength because of his grace. This hour, lift up your hands. As we look up onto that cross of Calvary, where Jesus paid the price. As we come to that riven side, that pierced side. At this hour, of our weaknesses and inabilities. Let us ask him to do that which only him can do. The circumcision without hands. He that calls things that we are not as if they were and they come into existence. He is about to do something new. Lord, I cannot help myself. I come unto you now. Lord, circumcise me. Circumcision takes makes you to go naked. Why not open up? Tell him where it is. Tell him what it is. Tell him how helpless you have been. And ask him to do it. Just as you responded in faith to invite Jesus to allow him to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. By that same faith, believe him. At night nine, Abraham surrendered himself in obedience and said, Lord, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. That pierced hand touch once again these hands, these hearts, these lives. Lord, touch. Let there be the circumcision by the Holy Spirit. Not by power, not by my but by my spirit. Let every mountain, every, every power of the flesh, of sin, that sin that so easily entangles us, that entangles you so quickly, whatever it may be, whether virtual or physical or by sight or by whatever, in mind or in thoughts, at this hour we bring unto him taking every 
thought and imagination captive to the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we are here before you as a demonstration that we are already tired of these struggles with Mr. Flesh Lord we are here to tell you that we are we hate it. We don't like it. It pains us that even as we confess you, we still hurt you. We are tired of this. We've struggled for years. We've done many things by our strength. But thank you for speaking to us clearly today that the, by the power of the flesh, no man can prevail and that's why we are leaning before you asking oh God that we experience the power the power that raised Jesus from death the power that brought him to life we pray God that you circumcise us remove oh God the power of flesh from us oh God which you can do alone and grant us by the power of your spirit to rise up to new life that that identity that Jesus has given us by his death will be our possession and that we begin to manifest Lord whatever it is fornication all moral behaviors quarrels, divisions fighting anger, idolatry, witchcraft all the works of flesh that has held us captive oh God Lord set us free in the name of Jesus Christ liberate us oh God let their chains be broken let their chains be broken let their powers be broken oh God set your children free Therefore, if you shall set us free, God, we shall be free indeed. This we believe in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we hand over these ones unto you. We seal them by the anointing of your Holy Spirit that breaks every yoke let every yoke be broken and Lord as they go they go forth in the strength and the power of the living God the power that came down on that day of Pentecost the power of the Holy Spirit for you said that we shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon us and we shall be your witnesses these ones shall go forth sealed by your spirit and they will be a living testimony in the name of Jesus Christ we pray Amen